Okay, welcome to our first accreditation focus group. Uh, we are going to be covering standards one and four today. We just had a great visit with our team chair, uh, Dr. Mike Rhoda, and he was very complimentary of the self-evaluation report. He said that it, we had lots of evidence, that he didn't really see any major issues, so that was very reassuring to hear. And um, the visit, as you know, starts on Monday, March 11th, but they will actually not come to the campus until Tuesday, uh, the 12th. So that's the first day they'll be here and then they're gonna be leaving um, on Thursday the 14th. They'll have an exit interview, and, uh, and then they will leave, and we expect to uh, hear something uh, fairly soon, a preliminary report, as we'll talk about later. Uh, the commission will meet in June to make a decision, and then typically within about a month or so of their meeting, we'll have a final determination of how we uh, did on the visit. But uh, again, I'm feeling very um, you know, cautiously optimistic that we have addressed the standards uh, very well. We have a lot of evidence. Um, Han has done a great job of posting the uh, self-evaluation report and all the evidence on the accreditation website. So uh, please try to start looking at it. Also, by next week, hopefully, everybody will get a hard copy. Uh, all the full-time faculty and the team leads We'll get a full copy of the, uh, hard copy of the report. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, we just, uh, I wanted to allow a few minutes for the vice presidents because one of the things that uh, Mr. Rota said when he visited us this morning was the need for leadership and uh, consistent, stable leadership and follow through the accreditation um, action agendas that are developed. So I wanted to take a minute to introduce and have them come up, and we'll start with the newest member of the Vice President Group, the Vice President of Academic Affairs, Michael Allen. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Well, I look around the room and I think that I've met most of you. If I haven't met you, please uh, introduce yourselves to me um, before you leave. The other thing I'd like to say is please encourage your colleagues to attend uh, these forums. We've got a, a couple more at least, and then we'll have a town hall. And I would really like to see more faculty members here so that we can talk about the accreditation process and how important it is to academic affairs. Uh, as you know, if you haven't already read the self-study, um, we do great things here at Mission. Uh, I'm an outsider looking in. Uh, and I've also uh, spent three years in Washington, D.C., and have visited a lot of community colleges uh, in the United States, and there's a lot to be proud of here, not only in academic affairs, but in administrative services uh, and in student services. And in the uh, interests of time, what I would like to say is that I've been welcomed warmly by the president, uh, by my two vice president colleagues, and we are working very well together in terms of institutional planning and an institutional master plan where we're working together to uh, all get to the objectives of serving students, serving faculty, serving staff, and most importantly, the community where we lie. So again, thank you for attending, and uh, we'll talk more later. Thank you, Michael. And now our veteran administrator, our Vice President of Student Services, uh, Joe Ramirez. Thank you, Dr. Petras. Uh, I want to just echo a couple things that Michael said, and, and I think that we are, uh, built a team here um, really to, first of all, the, the uh, site visit is going to be something that I think we should all embrace. Um, maybe the little anxiety, but I, I don't think we should have a whole lot of anxiety. Whatever the results are, I just think it's going to bring us together a little bit more. We have a better understanding of what we're doing well, what, what we need to improve on. And I think the team, and, and Dr. Perez is a big part of this, is bringing us together, talking about collaborations. Um, I think for uh, the first time in a long time, the three pres vice presidents uh, working very, very closely together, talking about the integration of student services, academic affairs, administrative services, how we're working together to do that. It, and some of that started over the summer. And, and, and before that. So I think we've really had an opportunity here with, through the accreditation process to take a, a real look at uh, our different divisions um, 
and of course the self-study and those most of you here in this room had a part in, in looking at the self-study so we know what we do real well we know the areas that we need to improve on uh, we know some areas that we need to start working on and I think together um, and, and Michael and I have had an opportunity in this short time to start talking about how we will work closer together um, and, and just one of the two things that happened recently and it also happened with, with Stephanie when she was interim uh, lead administrator was that we started to talk a lot more. Um, Michael's invited us to the Council of Instruction, always have a presence there. And we've invited Michael to our student services meeting or, or a designee to really understand the dynamics of our programs and our division. So we're real happy about this time. I think we're going to do well. And if we don't, if we have a piece here and there to correct, we just jump in there and do it and we'll do that collectively and collaboratively. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Appreciate that. And finally, uh, the engine, uh, you can't do anything without finances, is our Vice President of Administrative Services. And one of the things about accreditation that is going to be looked at very carefully in the microscope will be our finances. So, um, Danny Villanueva, our VP of Administrative Services, please tell us a few things. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, just want to echo what, what Dr. Perez, uh, Michael, uh, and Joe have said, I think uh, this last month has been very exciting. We're working really good, almost seamlessly in the short time uh, together. Uh, I had an opportunity to spend a little about an extra hour uh, with our lead because I'm the ALO, but one of the things that he's really going to be focused on is the finances. Uh, the district will have a special accreditation visit solely for finances by the ACCJC Commission. This is something that is coming from the feds, so this is critical. So money is a driving force as to what type of institutions we're going to be in the future, and they really are concerned about cash flows. Budgets are good, but budgets and cash have nothing to do with each other. Uh, fortunately, uh, my previous experience deals with cash flows and deals with finance, so he and I talked about California financing, uh, the intricacies of it, so I think we're on good standing to be able to walk him through that. Uh, my role during uh, the week of accreditation is kind of dual. I'm not only, you know, working on standard three, but basically uh, I am the single point of contact for everything and anything. Whether somebody wants a sandwich, or they want additional information, or they want to talk to somebody, or they want to know what restaurant is open at 10 at night. I'm the single point of contact, so during that week, it is critical that if I'm calling you or hounding you down, it is because the accreditation team wants something. It's not my typical call just to tell you no on a purchase order, but it's, it's to be able to call you because the accreditation team. So that week of March 11th, my sole purpose, as I've been directed, uh, is to solely focus on the accreditation team and literally just sit there and wait for requests and facilitate everything. So uh, your cooperation is greatly appreciated in advance. It's gonna be a great visit. Uh, we'll know uh, around June, uh, that's when the Accreditation Commission meets and then about 30 to 45 days after that. So we're looking at the end of July, early August, we'll, we'll know what the, well, where we're at. So thank you very much. Thank you, Danny. So that week he is the uh, uh, ALO, is Accreditation Liaison Officer. And his, his role will be to be the point of contact so let's all light a candle for him, make sure he eats his Sweeties, because he's going to be on his feet 24-7 that week. So I want to thank the three vice presidents. I just wanted to put that on record that they are working closely and they're moving forward to assist us during this accreditation and also through all the operations of the college. Um, so without uh, further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce the panel. So for standard one, we have... Um, Kathy Brinkman, who's standing right here as our administrative lead, uh, Angela Agajanian, uh, Gloria Dames, Rosalie Hilger, and Tobin Sparfeld, and they're going to be um, giving us a presentation on Standard One. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm really uh, very pleased to be here today. We've had a really strong team on Standard One. Um, it's a very comprehensive uh, standard in terms of looking at both the mission statement and also improving institutional effectiveness. I did provide a handout, which actually 
starts looking at the standard. The, the 1A includes the mission statement. And in the 1A standard, uh, we are asked to discuss the college's mission statement, which defines the college's institutional commitment to achieving student learning. The mission statement serves as the college's foundation for institutional planning and guides the college's strategic master plan and the development of the other master plans at the campus. Um, up here, um, this is specifically the language in the standard, if you want to take a look at that. And then we're going to have Rosalie uh, Hilger um, talk about what we did with standard 1A. Hi, everybody. Um, as you know, the mission statement for any institution is crucial. It really defines the institution and what um, the work is that we're going to be doing. So uh, one of the things that uh, you know about a mission statement is that it's very much alive and vital. So it constantly changes depending on uh, new information that's being uh, brought to the institution. So we have looked at the mission statement and there were some revisions that took place in 2010 and 2012. And uh, the revisions were as a result of surveys that were given to faculty, staff, and students. We had o almost a thousand responses to our um, survey. As you can see, about 710 students responded and about 179 faculty responded. And so um, there were... Um, some results that are uh, listed there. We had the adopted statement, which overwhelmingly was voted um, into existence. We had an alternate statement, which got less votes. And then we had neither statement, which got a few votes. So um, as a result, uh, our revised mission statement as you will see it in our catalog, in our um, schedule of classes, and around college, in our classrooms, in our offices, states. And this is crucial. Los Angeles Mission College is committed to the success of our students. If you know nothing else, I think this really says it all. The college provides accessible, affordable, high-quality learning opportunities in a culturally and intellectually supportive environment by ensuring that students successfully transfer to four-year institutions, prepare for successful careers in the workplace, and improve their basic skills. It encourages students to become critical thinkers and lifelong learners, and it provides services and programs that improve the lives of the diverse communities we serve. Thank you. Well, the, the, really the crux of the, the, um, our standard also is um, 1B, which is improving institutional effectiveness. And the college has made significant progress since the last accreditation in terms of looking at um, um, the program review process on the campus, as well as shared governance at the, at the campus. Um, in this standard, we're asked that we demonstrate the college's effort to produce and support student learning, how we measure and assess how well learning is occurring, and how we make changes to improve student learning. The college is asked to demonstrate its effectiveness in providing evidence of the achievement of student learning outcomes and evidence of institution and program performance. And this is, this is what's stated in our standard and our responses throughout. Um, hopefully that, I don't know, Angela, if the documents have been printed or if they're available, but... Um, Next week we'll have hard copies so you can look through all the standards. Okay, um, and then Angela, it's Tobin. Tobin's going to. All right. So what have we been doing to respond to Standard One B all this time? Well, we have. Uh, first of all, we have this online. Oop, I'm in the light. Online program review system, uh, so that every unit uh, gets to us uh, gets to look at the data that. Uh, that applies to it and see what's working, what's not working, and, uh, and then um, 
figure out how to make that better, how to improve that, and that's tied to budget and planning. So those, uh, those uh, requests, those overbase requests, go to budget and planning committee. They're discussed, they're ranked um, from representatives of, of, the, of the whole college, and then those recommendations go to college council, and, and therefore the process is, is, uh, is transparently uh, achieved. There's also been an, an online SLO system. Uh, you may have be familiar with Pat Flood. And, <laughs> and she is, she is uh, the dynamo behind uh, the, the, getting the online SLO system and making sure we're all conforming to that uh, and linking that to program review. And also, the, uh, not just SLOs, but the institutional learning outcomes. We've started uh, assessing those um, last semester and uh, I was on that for, um, for the aesthetic responsiveness standard and it, it was really interesting uh, to, to be part of that process as well. We also have several master plans. We have the educational master plan that's looking out in terms of long-term progress and then our, our strategic master plan, which we review annually and update uh, on an annual basis. And then we also have various surveys and ways of collecting data from the very small, from you know, faculty and, and staff student surveys from to the you know, campus-wide um, data gathering and then to district-wide sorts of initiatives that help uh, gather data. So all of that goes into our, our idea of having an ongoing plan of, uh, of making sure we're, we're being effective. Thank you. And um, program review is the mechanism of self-assessment, which is the basis of college planning. Um, as many of you, um, all units go through the self-assessment process to ensure that they are aligned with the college mission and goals which are stated in the strategic master plan and educational master plan. All departments are required to conduct a comprehensive program review every year. Although the comprehensive is every, conducted every three years, um, we all are required to do an annual um, program review on an annual basis. And they are usually due on the first week of November. Um, Program review is consist of the following components: unit planning, which is done on a, uh, which is our annual process. Basically, units develop and update their future plans to further improve the effectiveness of the unit. And the effectiveness review, units analyze data such as enrollment certificate, degree awards, use of technology, cl class size. Um, curriculum review applies only to academic uh, units and um, they review status of curricular offerings. SLOs um, are review of the academic department activities in relation to developing, assessing, and implementing SLOs. Now, service area outcomes uh, apply to student services uh, only, and uh, actually as well as administrative uh, units only. And all areas list uh, the requests for resources such as equipment, personnel, and supplies. That's done through resource allocation. Requests are part of the online SLO system linked to the resource request section of program review. Um, just want to share with you on uh, page three of the handout, um, we have some of the areas that we have, um, that some of the strengths that we have, that we found from the last accreditation. Uh, we have a shared governance structure that's been in operation since 2007. We have a planning and resource allocation model that has been utilized and improved, since, improved upon since 2009. Uh, we've made very significant progress on the development of the assessment of SLOs and PLOs. And we have completed a full cycle of comprehensive review for uh, the academic programs uh, since uh, 2007. Some of the areas that we found with the standard that we need to improve upon are, we need to, um, and this is based on some of the surveys that we received, the responses from students and faculty, that we need to implement um, some strategies on the campus to increase effective communication in the planning process on the campus. Um, the other thing is um, that was new that came out of the uh, retreat, the annual college council retreat this fall, 
was the establishment of a program review oversight. And the role of that oversight committee will be to standardize the processes across the campus in terms of the divisions um, so that they can assess their outcomes on an annual basis. Okay, and now we're going to go to Gloria, and she's going to talk about um, PLOs and SLOs. Hello. Um, as our mission statement indicates, we are committed to our students' success. So, um, therefore, we want students to learn. And as you can see, we are um, actually committed to support student learning. And we do it by measuring, implementing, and assessing. Measuring, implementing, and assessing SLOs. PLOs, ILOs, all these O's. So we do the student learning outcomes, we do all the program learning outcomes, institutional learning outcomes, as well as um, student service area outcomes and administ administrative unit outcomes. And if you look at the graphic, you are gonna see how effective we've been um, developing all these outcomes. And you can see the increase since 2010 all the way to the present year. Um, it's really significant and we should be very proud. Uh, you can see that we have, uh, starting in 2010, 89%, which is the courses that have already defined SLOs, 2011 and 12, 98, and presently it's 100%. Uh, the, the blue, I was, looks like I'm kind of colorblinded, but it's blue. Uh, courses with ongoing assessment for the present year is 100% and changes that have been implemented is 52%. The changes that you have implemented when you assess your SLOs um, are changes such as, for example, uh, making some type of uh, change with your um, assessment, the assessment type that you do in the classroom, perhaps referring the students for tutoring, any changes that you have to do um, that's what this is reflecting, changes implemented. So there was 52 percent, uh, I'm explaining this right, 52 percent change than with all, all courses. Now, this is the million dollar question, where do you find your SLOs? Uh, you find your SLOs in all courses, um, in all courses outlines, um, also, you have your SLOs on your syllabi, and your syllabus. All syllabi will have a list of SLOs. All certificates will have um, SLOs as well as programs. And of course, this is only um, for academic units. It only applies to academic units. Uh, we are all aware, all aware of the connection that we have between SLOs, PLOs, and ILOs. Um, the student learning outcomes need to support the program learning outcomes, and the program learning outcomes need to support the inst institutional uh, learning outcomes. How do we assess these outcomes? Well, um, we are all familiar with the ECD, Electronic Curriculum Development Online, ECD. So we use it to um, create our um, SLOs, um, review them, and that also includes uh, PLOs, um, program review uh, that we do uh, annually or the comprehensive, which we do every three years. What about the frequency of our SLOs? Uh, you're a faculty member, you know that you do this every semester, is that right? And how often do we assess our SLOs? It's actually once every three years. Um, of course, SLOs um, are part of our um, course outline of record, uh, curriculum updates, and also support the institutional learning outcomes. This is uh, something that we can be very proud of. 93% um, of our students uh, actually are aware of our SLOs. Um, they do know that SLOs are actually listed in our uh, syllabi. And 
That was done uh, last spring 2002, this particular survey. And I'm gonna let um, Kathy or Angela to go over the last slide. You wanna, yes? Yeah. Okay, so I think this is a good transition um, for, uh, Tobin, you're gonna be talking about uh, Budgeting? Okay. So we're going to skip over this real quickly and uh, go to the next one. Okay. So this is the uh, budget and planning process that I hinted about earlier. So uh, we talked about program review that goes, so uh, we go, we're going to go from bottom to top. So the program review process, uh, you see there um, the, the resource allocation requests, um, those go to the uh, to their various uh, uh, VPs, their academic affairs, their various unit heads, uh, student services, admin services, and the president's office. Um, those go to their division managers. And again, there's collaboration and a discussion about what's needed there. And then those come before, uh, if they're facilities related, then those obviously go to the facilities planning committee and then over to the budget and planning committee. There. Then uh, that's where the over base request process happens, usually annually every spring. And those are ranked um, uh, through our process there. And uh, again, every representative from Budget, Committee, uh, Budget and Planning Committee has input there on, on those rankings. Then, uh, then those go up to College Council, where they're, uh, the, because those decisions are only, those rankings are only a recommendation to College Council, so College Council has input there and then uh, to the president's office. And so those, uh, you can see that process there and then also uh, for, for facilities planning as well, how that process happens. So it's really sh a shared uh, process. It's a very transparent process and it's something, uh, I don't know if you have any questions you can ask me during the question period about it. What's next? I think, uh, I think that um, concludes our presentation. But I just wanted to also note that although Pat and Angela and everyone has been working very hard in writing this document, that it's only as good as the evidence that we have to demonstrate what we have done on the campus. So in the handout, the last two pages, um, and I'd encourage all of you to go to the accreditation website because for each of the standards, it lists all the evidence for each of the standards. So we can talk very nicely um, in a report, but we have to document everything that we really have done on the campus. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions. Um... Are there any questions for standard one? The SLOs are located in the syllabus, in the course outline of record, and what was the last one, the last place? The, Schedule uh, classes? The catalog. Yes, um, SLOs can be found on, you know, your syllabi, syllabus or all syllabi, syllabi. All active courses, certificates, and programs have student learning outcomes. Again, uh, courses, certificates, programs, and of course, your syllabus. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. As the assistant SLO coordinator, can I say something about that? Um, so we do have the syllabus, we do have the ECD, COR, and we do have the online assessment system. Now, you cannot find the PLOs in the COR, ECD, sorry for all the acronyms. Um, but um, you can find the on, on the SLO assessment system all the PLOs and ILOs and everything. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Any more questions? Thank you. These PowerPoints will also be available on the website as well. <laughs>